self-esteem is dangerous because it allows for you to allow others to abuse you and treat you any kind of way without any repercussion because you feel like you deserve it because you're nothing. Um, and I grew up like that. Um, I remember when I was about 18, people would make fun of my walk because I always, you could tell I had, I had low self-esteem just by the way I walked. Um, people always had something negative to say and each negative feedback would get my heart racing and my self-esteem would drop a notch lower. Um, I was just always afraid and concerned about what people thought about me. And if I heard something bad, I would like isolate for days. It, it was, it was horrible. Um, and then I came to America and, um, with each rejection of whatever the situation was, it, my self-esteem would just get worse and worse. And I've tipped, I've, I've, I've talked a little about this in other videos. Um, other than New York City, I've always ended up living in predominantly white areas. And for a person of color, that alone can ruin your self-esteem because you have to justify your, um, justify your presence in a space. You always have to be reassuring people that you're different. It, it's too much. Um, you don't feel welcomed in certain areas, you know, and a lot of this is, it's, 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 um, it's very passive. Like they're not going to say to you, you're not welcome here, but you just know you're not because of the way they're treating you as opposed to other people. And after a while, it just eats at your self-esteem because you can't fix it. And you have to deal with this every day. Now, someone would say, well, why not just move? Well, I'm an immigrant and I don't have family here. I have to be very careful about the decisions I make because I can't go back. You know, I can't jump up and be like, okay, let me just move to Maryland. There's more black people. Well, let's say I go there and then I'm working and my job gets shut down. I can't pay my apartment. I can't come back here. I don't have family. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Plus, I can't do significant changes. I can't do strong changes all the time because they cause me severe anxiety and I could end up becoming like temporarily disabled because of it. Because when I get hit with anxiety, it's debilitating. I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't sleep, I can't think, I can't do anything. So anyway, so back on topic. So that in itself messed up my self-esteem, especially when I lived in Bloomsburg. My self-esteem was non-existent, non-existent at all. It was terrible. Um, people treated me like trash. Um, you know, when I went to, like, when I was invited to, like, barbecues and stuff, someone had to go ahead and justify my, my presence there. It was just too much. But anyway... So fast forward to moving to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, it's itches. Um, I decided that I was going to address this because I I know a big part of self esteem is how it's, it's how the world sees you. Okay, because self esteem would have no purpose if you were the only person living on. It would make no, it would not exist. It would make no sense. What are you having the self-esteem for? To hunt? So um, I started addressing it by doing what I wanted. In a tasteful way, of course, because I have to, I still have to live in a society. So I'm not going to put tattoos on my face and that kind of stuff. But I did what I wanted. I... As I said in previous videos, I've worked out. I got my ink, my organized chaos ink. Um, I started dressing in a way that I would see pleasing if I saw someone dressed like that. Um, because a part of having low self-esteem as well, um, you, do, is you don't tend to have an identity. You know, you try to be a chameleon, 
because you're trying to fit in so bad. Um, and so you become a chameleon. So I have no self-esteem at all. I have no style. I have no, it's like I was just living to please people you know, and that would be what would build my self-esteem. But then I realize it doesn't work like that and you're constantly unhappy because you're constantly in overdrive trying to please the world. So how I addressed mine, the first thing I did was I got, I did my own professional photo. I did so many experiments until I got a really nice one. And then I put it in my room. I think actually it's on my YouTube channel that thing where I'm like looking like through the corner view. But anyway, everyone knows I'm lazy. I'm not gonna put that video, I'm not gonna put that picture on this video. But anyway, um, so I did that. I also put it on my debit card. Um, and I started making like little goals for myself. Um, you know, like, I'm like, okay, I need to get a few more inches on my shoulder. Let me just work out a little harder. But it's not to attract people. It's so that when I'm home by myself and I look in the mirror, I'm pleased. Um, another thing I did, I stopped asking for feedback when I go places. Like that was one of the things that ruined me when I was younger. If I went to a party or a gathering, I'd be like, oh, what do they say about me? I no longer care. In fact, when someone would be like oh my friends i don't want to hear it I, I really don't want to hear it like i don't want to hear it in fact i'll tell my friends if anyone says anything please keep it to yourself i don't want to know i'm not here to please anyone so stop telling me what people said um of course you know they'll still tell me the positive stuff but they know not to tell me the negative because i'll be mad as fuck if i can say that um so that was one thing. Another thing I um, I stopped doing, I, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I had to do it. I stopped trying to pursue people because I realized that was a trigger for me. Um, partially, as I said, it's predominantly white areas and most people on dating sites are gonna be white. Um, I stopped pursuing people. Um, I'll do stuff like, I don't know, follow their Instagram. If they're interested, they'll probably reach out. If not, in a couple months, I'll just unfollow. I do passive stuff because what you don't want to do is keep aggressively like pursuing these people and then they keep shutting it down because I think as a society, we underestimate the power of repetition and we're very unrealistic about what repetition does to your brain. If you keep applying to jobs and you're applying in the 50s and hundreds and you keep getting denied, it is going to start making you question your qualification and your skills. No, no amount of positive thinking is going to help with the ultimate. It's even worse with the dating because then now you start feeling like something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. You aren't attractive. You aren't interesting enough. You're the wrong color. You're the wrong body size, whatever it is. Sometimes you need to walk away. Walk away, give it a break, and go somewhere where you're appreciated. See, I was slowly falling into that because I just kept getting rejected or my time wasted or pursued for the wrong reason by this um, people from this area. I won't just say it's white people because it's not, but I kept having this. And so I started feeling, you know, like I'm never going to find anyone serious. You know, I'm just going to keep finding fun seekers and I'm 34. 
you know, that was okay in my early 20s. Like now, you know, friends of mine that are, are white, you know, and don't really care what they look like. They, they are just having fun. They have a ton of extra weight. And they're like buying houses and settling down. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? But, and this is where this helps a lot. I went to Puerto Rico and I was shocked at the number of people that were like, oh, you're in town, let's go on a date. And I'm like, oh my God, I did not realize this exists. Like, I, people met me just to buy me lunch. People met me just to take me somewhere and chat. And I was like, wow. Two of the experiences that stood out to me, one person kept convincing me, which this person kept, is a photographer and stylist. It was like, I know some people. Ooh, sorry. He was like, I know some people that are definitely looking for your look. Like your look is what they're looking for with their campaign. Um, and I was like, how so? And he was like, you know, you have the cheekbones, you just have that look. And that's all that happened with that. You know, he bought us lunch and we chat and we talked about the fashion world and that was it. And then there was another person that thought I was Samoan. I don't get that. Maybe it's the tattoos. I don't know. Um, but there were people that were, they were celebratory of me and they weren't doing it to get in my clothes. And that alone, like, smacked me in the face and said to me, look, you're experiencing this because of where you live. It has nothing to do with the reality of the world. It's not. And sometimes when we're in an area long enough, we think that's the world and it affects our self-esteem because we feel like we're not good enough. Nothing is happening for us. Why move anywhere else? The whole world is the same, but it's not. And that's why I'm a, a, I'm a strong believer of traveling. Traveling does so much for your self-esteem and your outlook on life. It makes you realize that your little small town challenges is so minuscule compared to what's in the world. And the fact that there's so many people from so many walks of life that have so many different perspectives. You're just feeling that way because of where you are. It's like, it's like the whole ugly duckling thing. The duckling was only seen ugly, not because it was ugly in the first place, but because it wasn't a duck. So it looked different. But once it grew up, it's a beautiful swan. The swans wouldn't see it as ugly because they know it's a baby swan. So sometimes you may feel, oh my God, my extra weight. Well, guess what? You may go to a Southern state and they're like, oh my God, you're fine. You may be unable to gain weight. And then you go somewhere and everyone's marveling and asking you for diet tips. It just, there's so many things that you could do to help your self-esteem. But to me, I feel like from what, what worked for me was being or working on being the best version of myself. I would set these challenges for myself. Um, you know, I, as I said, I would be like, okay, let's see if I can bring down my body fat percentage for, you know, a percent or two. Not because I want to look hot in a magazine or I want to look hot on Instagram. It's not that. I want to look in the mirror and see the definition be like, Nice. One other challenge now. That have helped me a lot. What have also helped me a lot is I started unfollowing a lot of the the Instagram models I did. I, I stopped following a lot of them. Like the ones I, I follow, especially the males, are, are um, high fashion uh, models because I like the way they pose, especially the urban ones, because of course I realize I don't photograph well in nature for some reason. I don't, maybe because of the ink. I don't know. I photograph best in an urban setting, like a city or, you know, something like that. I, I photograph better there. 
So I will follow those models because I like their little poses, you know, looking at their watches, holding it. I love that. So I'll keep following them because I'll see the whole production going on and their style. But I'm not following the six-pack abs on beaches and stuff because stuff like that can also start, as I said, repetition. It start making you feel, you know, you start feeling some kind of way because you don't look like that and you work out so hard at the gym. Not considering the fact that, number one, a lot of times they'll do these photographs when they're fasted and dehydrated in the morning where all the muscles are showing. They're also oiled and they have people with reflectors, professional cameras, and people helping them pose and all that stuff. And then it's touched, like it's retouched. And you're trying everything you can to look like that. And then you post your Sunday best picture and you get five likes. Things like that will eat at your self-esteem. I know it sounds trivial, but let me tell you, the brain adapts to repetition. And if every day you see this person down the street posting pictures and they have 500 likes and you put all your energy in one and you post it and you get 10, you start feeling like, oh my God, nobody likes me. I'm so unattractive. You, I'm not telling people to completely get off social media, but manage your content, you know, manage what you're consuming. If you're someone that's desperately looking for relationships, stop following Instagram couples because it's only going to ruin your self-esteem. You're only going to get depressed. Stop doing it. You know, if you're struggling to make ends meet, stop watching the people that's telling you they make $5,000 a week. Stop it because it's going to eat at you, you know, but that's my two cents of how I address my self-esteem. I'm not going to say it's perfect because it fluctuates. Um, you know, um, there are years when it's on cloud nine. I felt like I was the most important person on earth. And then there are times when I feel like I'm nobody, you know. So not recently, though, but it has happened before. And so I just realized once I started doing the things that were healthy for me mentally, you know, not being on social media constantly, not constantly posting stuff and watching the likes. In fact, now I post stuff and I don't even notice anything. I may notice a message a couple of days after or something. Um, but as I said, I removed all the Insta couples. I, I don't do those anymore. I follow a lot of people that are natural bodybuilders. I follow a lot of high fashion uh, models, especially male models, because as I said, I like to see how they coordinate their look with an environment because people like me i'm not versatile when it comes to backgrounds i can't do nature it doesn't look good my beach pictures are crappy um but i look very good in a nice city i can rock a look in a nice city um but yeah so i you know i i watch what i consume you know, I, I stop consuming people that make me jealous. I stop following people that are always with 20 people. Oh my God, my friends, yay. I stopped doing that. I stopped following that because I don't have a lot of friends and now I feel some kind of way. Something's wrong with me. I don't have a ton of friends. So yeah. So let me know in the comment section what you have done for your self-esteem or if you need me, what kind of video you probably want me to do. At this point, I'm taking suggestions because, you know, I don't want it to be all about me or, you know, all about dating stuff. I'm kind of tired of talking about those now. I'm in a different place now and I'm, I'm just looking back at some of the progress I've made over the years. So yeah, leave your comment and I'll see you guys soon.